everyone, this is Dr. Scott Gray from Back in Motion Support and Spine Physical Therapy and yours truly, Dr. Jonathan Gonzalez. So in this quick video, we're going to explain the most common ways to reduce soccer injury. So if you're a parent or an athlete and you're looking to you know, avoid an ACL tear, groin strains, or any soccer injury, then this is the video for you. So Dr. Gonzalez, a few things um, that we commonly see is athletes not warming up properly. So what are some things that come to your mind that athletes don't do when they're warming up? Yeah, so I think when um, we go out to the soccer fields, it's very common we see athletes just kind of do a quick 10 second stretch, whether it be their hamstrings, um, their quads, maybe a groin or a butterfly stretch, and then they, they kind of just get into action. They might do a quick lap to the end of the goalpost and back, but that's, that's typically, you know, usually what we see is quick, dirty, and then on to the practice. Yeah, or if not at all, sometimes we see athletes, they don't even warm up at all, and they hop right into practice, and they wonder why they hurt. Uh, what are some of the other benefits of a warm-up from a parent standpoint? For the parents out there, as far as, you know, maybe increasing muscle, vas muscle vascularity, um, tissue warmth and that to prevent a groin strain, that mobility, nervous system fire. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so basically, you're, you're pretty much going from zero to 100 um, without getting the car, the engine ready. And so once you start getting those tissues ready, whether it be the groin muscles, the hamstring muscles, your, your thoracic spine, even your neck muscles, then once you get a quick reaction, a, um, a quick play, your, your body's prepared and it, it doesn't have to um, overexert or over, you know, stretch or hurt itself during the motion. Sure. And the other thing I would like to add in is that, you know, your traditional warm-up stuff is good, you know, whether it be, you know, a nice run, uh, some karaoke, skipping, some dynamic stretching that, but I would also add that we need to warm up in these different planes of motion. So as athletes, you know, we're stopping and starting, we're reaching, we're twisting, we're bending, and so just really try to mimic the sport that they're in so that when they do get put in those positions that they don't get hurt. So another thing that we commonly see that goes wrong with soccer athletes in particular is that they don't strength train. So Dr. Gonzalez, maybe talk a little bit about strength training and how that helps athletes improve their performance but also mitigate injury. Yeah, so as, as these soccer players are, are growing, they're kind of going through that awkward phase where their body's almost growing faster than they're, they're used to and then they're being put in high demand, whether it be sprinting across the field, they're cutting on, on a dime. And so with that, though, without those strong stabilizers of the hips, of the low back, of the knee, you know, you're putting these, these developing bodies that are growing into to situations that can be detrimental and, and can cause injury. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a good point. You know, especially the female athlete, you know, the girls especially, they're more prone to an ACL tear and they've got these wide hips, they got no strength. And so strength training is really important for the, especially these female athletes in regards to helping prevent an ACL tear, just stopping and starting and that. Another few things that's really beneficial for strength training is that it helps increase our connective tissue strength. So your connective tissue is like your fascia, your ligaments, your tendons, and the sheaths around your nerves. And so when we get those stronger, then when an athlete is exposed to a force or trauma, they're more or less or they're less likely to be injured. So strength training really is important in that regard. And then the other side of it is it's going to make them a better athlete. So if they want to run faster, jump higher, kick the ball harder, strength training really is, you know, the foundation to helping your athlete do just that. Uh, what are some common strength training exercises that you soccer athletes could do at home? Well, some common things are um, a lot of what, what's been commonly been used as posterior chain exercises or gl uh, glute and hip exercises because those are your, your base, that's the base of your house when you're pushing off or when you're going to kick or turn and, and even go for, for a, a sprint or, or running. So that would be like what, like a, a squat, deadlifts, deadlifts, hamstring curl, yep. one of those ones, right. And that kind of leads us into the next part of what we commonly see is some really tight muscles on these soccer athletes and it can really cause you know pathology whether it be plantar fasciitis um, abdominal strain sports hernias you name it and so as a soccer athlete we tend to kick and use our hip flexor muscles and our groin muscles commonly 
And as Dr. Jonathan had mentioned, we want to strengthen the opposite muscles, which is called your posterior chain, your glutes, your hamstrings, because these front part of the thigh muscles get really kind of tight in that. So case in point, we want to probably stretch what our, our hip flexors, our groin, uh, some of our calf muscles, right, Dr. Yeah. Gonzalez? Yep, yep, that's commonly the, the one thing we always recommend is stretch those, those hip flexors, groin, calf, and do it in multiple planes. Don't just do the quick, you know, pull the leg back, you know, do it dynamically so you can mimic what you're doing on the field. Absolutely. And a couple of things that come to our mind is, you know, something simple you could do is just a little side lunge before practice. You can even do just a regular lunge, which is, which is going to help open up the hip and stretch out the hip flexors, but also even kind of get some of the calf, calf muscles. So the last but not least, this is one of the part that is probably the most overlooked, I would say, in regards to um, preventing a soccer injury, and that would be rest and proper nutrition. So as a soccer club athlete, you're going season long, season to season, right? You're going practice to practice, or then you're going into high school or middle school soccer, and you don't really get a chance to get a break. You may be practicing, you know, three to five days, then you're training two or three days with your sports coach, and so you never really get your body a chance to rest. So Dr. Gonzalez, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Maybe what are some key points that they can do to maybe get a little bit more rest um, and also just addressing some of the nutrition side of things? Yeah, I think that what we're seeing more common now in younger athletes is just overuse injuries. They've just been playing soccer since for a year long. And I think a big thing is just, just try, you know, active rest. And for a kid, what that might be is just a different sport, you know, use different muscle groups, try to, to you know, play, you know, if you're a soccer athlete, play catch or do something different with the ball instead of just drill and drill and drill because, you know, overuse is just, we see it much young, younger now than we have in the past. And I think it's just these, these specific, the specific, the specificity of just doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, that's a good point. So I think if you're watching this and you're a parent, I think, you know, having your athlete mix up his seasons or maybe every um, a couple days a week he might play basketball yeah. or he might go swimming or he might do a different type of sport because when you are a soccer athlete and you're going from you know practice to practice and game to game you're using a lot of the same muscles you get burnout and the body eventually wears down and so you really shouldn't specialize until you're late in high school and in college and obviously in professional so if you're able to play multiple sports, it's going to make your son or daughter a better athlete because they're using different skills, different coordination, but it's also going to keep them healthier. Another common thing that we see is just not adequate rest, right? So athletes, you know, they're up on their phones late at night. They may only be getting five hours of sleep. So some simple things would be to just get into a schedule, you know, shutting the lights off in the room, no electronics, keeping it cool place and just getting on a ritual schedule where you know, you're going to bed at the same time, you're eating dinner at the same time. And I think that would go a long way, you know, far as allowing your body to rest and heal in between workouts, sessions, and games. And then the other side of it is the nutrition component. So, um, Dr. Gonzalez, maybe talk just a little bit about water hydration and how a lot of athletes are just so dehydrated, they're drinking colas and sodas mm -hmm. instead of just drinking water, which is so important to the body. Yeah, I mean, our body's made up about 75% of water, and I know as kids, we we want to tend to to grab those sugary drinks but you know when we're playing soccer if we want to make it through the tournaments or the double headers or whatever whatever it is you know soda is just not going to cut it get even Gatorade you've got to have water 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 and so um, it, it helps fuel your muscles it helps kind of keep your your muscles and tendons nice and plump and and it just allows your body to to move you know it's and it's not in the beginning of the game it's towards the end and the years and years of just playing soccer over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. And then just to elaborate further on that is the other side is the nutrition of the food. So making sure that your athlete, you know, is eating fruits and vegetables, he's eating, you know, complete carbohydrates and, you know, good protein sources. The athlete needs protein in their body to allow their muscles, tendons, ligaments, and all that to repair to help lay the foundation for the building blocks. And then obviously, you know, good fats and carbohydrates as well to help replenish some of the energy sources that they're depleting in soccer because they're, you know, they're running from field to field and play to play. So uh, there you have it. Those are the ways to reduce soccer injuries. A few things that we talked about in this episode is how to warm up properly. We then talked about the benefits of strength training. We then talked about the tight muscles that the soccer athlete tends to develop. 
And then last but not least, we learned and talked about proper rest and nutrition. So I think if you apply these things, your athlete will become less prone to an injury and they will perform at a higher level.